Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from Code Shots with Profanis. Couple months ago, I created a video, you can check it here, where I explain how to use the functional router guards. A lot of you have asked how to unit test them, and you know what? You are absolutely right, and thanks for asking. The unit tests are part of our day-to-day -day job, and we should definitely know how to test our features. So without any further delay, let's get started. So let's first refresh our memory and see what we have here. We have created two different guards, two different functional guards. The first one is the can activate function and the second one is the can match function. Into this line we have the router where I'm using the inject function to inject the router. And the same goes here, inject auth service. And sort of the same with different logic for the can match function. And actually, these two lines, the inject router and inject auth service, will be a bit of challenge here. So let me grab this line, inject auth service, and I will go into the app component and I will do the following. I will implement here the on init, and inside here I will have my inject auth service, and then I will do auth service here equals inject auth service. Let me import everything. And just let's start the server. ng serve. If we go to the browser, we can see here that we have this error. Inject must be called from an injection context such as constructor, a factory function, a field initializer, or a function used with environment injector. And specifically, we need to have the run in context method. So this is our problem that we have to solve. So let's go back again to VS Code and I will delete this line. This was just to highlight the error and how we have to move on. And now let's start with our unit test. And I will first start highlighting what kind of test I want to have for this one. And let's do the following. I want my isLogedIn guard to return true and then my isLogedIn guard to return false. <laughs> Is logged in guards return true and this one is return false. And please note that this is just empty. No more than that. So let's start step by step. And of course, we need to have the before each where I'm going to use the test bed. Okay, so this is our very first step of how to start unit testing. So let's focus now into this method. We have to test this one is logged in card function. So you know what, let's go here and I will do the following. I want to test the isLogedIn card function. And this guy has an error. And the problem is that we have to provide the activated route snapshot. Here we have two different options. The first option is to create my router snapshot equals new activated route snapshot. And provide it as is. And the second one is to use dependency injection via testbed. So let's do the dependency injection. So here into the providers, I want to provide my activated route. And as a value, use value, I want to use an object. And that object will have a snapshot, snapshot, which will be just an empty object. No more than that. And now let's go here into our test and I want via the test bed, I want to inject, inject which one, the activated route. And I will have it here like my activated route equals to this one. And now I will provide into the first argument of is logged in guard function, I will provide the activated route dot snapshot. Okay, so the second one that we have to provide here is the state. So you know what, let me go here into the is logged in guard. And as you can see, I do not use the activated route snapshot and I do not even use a state. So it's okay to provide just an empty object here. And we have an error which says that type object is missing the following properties. You know what, let's have a type casting as the router state snapshot. 
Okay, so this is it. This is how we are managing to provide the arguments for the isLogedIn guard function. And as you can see, this returns either a boolean, a URL tree, or observable. In our case, we return an observable, an observable boolean. So let's have a typecasting here as well. And this is going to be my guard response. At first, let's try to test this as is, and we will go step by step. Let's do here an ng test to see what is happening. And of course, this fails. And the reason is that functional guards is logged in guards would return true failed. So we have similar error to what we saw previously into the app component. The inject must be called from an injection context such as constructor, a factory function, a field initializer, or a function used with environment injector and specifically the method run in context. So let's stop the tests and again focus into constructing correctly the unit test. So what we have to do is to run this function, this logged in guard function into the environment injector. And we can do this using the test bed. There is a method run in injection context which use the environment injector and run in context method. And as you can see, we can provide here a function. So this is our function and I will grab this code, this one, uh, I will cut it and paste it here. And this is going to be the outcome of this one actually is going to be our guard response. So let's do this like that. Now we have the testbed run injection context where providing the function where we have the snapshot, we have the router state snapshot and so on and so forth and we expect this to be something. Before we move on, let's give it a try. And it seems that we have two success unit tests. And of course, this is the wrong part here. We have two, un two success unit tests and the reason is that we didn't provide an expectation. And as you can see, this is just an empty one. The good news here is that we managed to run the is logged in guard function into the run injection context, which is the very first step. So let's continue and try to test this out. So I said the guard response now is an observable and we'll have to test that. How to do so? we we'll have to subscribe to that. So let me here return this one, this guy, return is logged in guard. And now I can go here and be like guard response and I want to subscribe. But please know that since we're going to have here a subscription, our code is asynchronous and we'll have to make sure to have an accurate response from our subscription. For this reason, I will use here my fake async and I will wrap all the unit tests into the fake async method to convert the asynchronous to a synchronous one using a tick method. So I will do the following. I have here my subscribe and then I grab the response and I want to keep that response in a temporary variable so that we have our expectation. So let me have here, let guard output equals to null and then I can be like my guard output equals to this kind of response and then my expectation would be that I want my guard output to be truthy. So this is what I want to have but still we we'll have here the fake async and we need also to wait for the subscription to execute and we will have to wait for, let's say, 100 milliseconds. And now we have to synchronize this timing with this execution, with the subscription one. And here I will use a pipe method and I will delay for 100 milliseconds. It still seems that we have two success unit tests here, but let's see what's happening. First, this is to be truthy. And even if we have the guard output like a JSON object, this will be truth as well. So let's convert this to be true. And just to be sure, let's console log here the guard output. Let's see what we have. And it logs true. Nice. How about now if I want this to be false? To be false. 
and of course this is going to be a failed one. So you know what, let me do the following. Here I'm going to have to be true and I will copy all of this code and I will paste it into the second unit test, which is this guy. And here I'm going to have my to be false. Okay. So here we have one fail. And the question here is how can we make this observable to return false? So let's follow this. If I go into is logged in guard function, here we have the router and then we have the auth service. So our response is based on this function, the is logged in function. So we have to mock the auth service. So let's go back into our unit test and start mocking. To mocking, we have to move up into our providers. And here I want to provide auth service. And I have to use a specific value. And the reason that I'm following this approach is that we want to spy the service and then mock the value. And to spy this, on top of that line, I will type the following. I want to have my auth service spy equals my jasmine dot create spy object for which one for the auth service. And which method do you want to spy? I want to spy, you know what? Let's go into the auth service and grab this one, is logged in. And I want to spy these methods. And actually only this one, the is logged in. And now the auth service spy, I will use it here. Nice. So let's now go and use the auth service spy. I want into this unit test to mock the response of the is logged in method to return true. And I will do this by using this line, auth service spy, and I want the is logged in method to return the value an observable of true. And let's do also the same into the other unit test. And this time I want to return false. So same thing, auth service spy is logged in method and return value what I want an observable with a value false. So let's now test again and see what's happening. And now we have one fail. Let's go and see what the error is. Cannot match any routes, URL segment, no access. Why do we have this kind of error? So let's follow the execution of our unit test. So here we're providing the value false and we have the run injection context. And then we have this is logged in guard. So let's go here. And as we can see, when this is false, then we are applying a navigation. Router navigate where to no access. And this is the reason we have this kind of error. To test this out, we have two different options. And let's see both of them. The first option is to use the router testing module here. And of course, use the import accordingly. Import router testing module from Angular router testing. And then here we can provide some routes. What kind of routes? Well, actually, I want a route with a path no access, which is the same with our code. And then here, of course, I have to provide my component. And since I do not have a component, I can create a dummy one. So this is just a dummy component with an empty template. Add import from Angular Core, and then let's use the dummy component here. Now, if I run the unit test, we see that everything works fine. And this is okay to stop at this level, since we are providing everything that we need for this unit test and everything that we need for this unit test as well. But you know what? I want to move a bit further on this one and have into this unit test a further expectation. I want to make sure that as soon as this is false, I want to make sure that I have a navigation as well. So let's give this a try. Let's go back again into the testbed configuration and I will delete this with routes. And of course, I no longer need to have this dummy component. 
And for this approach, what we need to do is to create something similar to this one. We want to spy the router. Const mock router equals, and then of course we have to use a Jasmine create spy object. The base name for this one is our router, and I will show you how to use this. And the only thing that I want to test here is one method, and this is my navigate. Since we have the mock router, let's use it into our providers. I want to provide my router, and as you can see, this is from Angular Router. And as a value, I want to use the mock router. If we now run the test, we expect everything to work as expected and not to have any failure. And as you can see, this is it. But as said, we want to move this a bit further and add one more expectation. And my expectation on this unit test is to have expect mock router and specifically the method navigate to have been called with no access. And this is it. So we have managed to unit test the false one, the is logged in guards return false, and make sure that not only the output of our guard is false, but at the same time we have a correct navigation. And this is it. This is how we manage to unit test the functional guards. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.